The bookstore, uh, right now we are in a process of returning all the books, mm. um, which we took as a consignment. And um, now, as you can see, we are doing uh, in the shelves, we are just distributing our souvenir mm. part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of books, a lot of writers, um, uh, authors, um, actually. Armenian authors, most Armenian, of them. Uh, Armenian authors, and some of them, they donated uh -huh. uh, their books. So we're going to have, on the 23rd, we're going to have a lot of books for people to take. Mm -hmm. And whatever is, um, we don't, nobody takes, we will definitely take it to the uh, libraries. Mm -hmm. um, wow. As you can see, <laughs> um, um, we have a lot of books, most of them which uh, we have taken, I mean, they're in bags, so um, the owners will come and take it. This mm. is a tough part, this is my very but, sensitive oh, part yeah, of I it, but uh, life is, this is the, again, another process. Another process. Another process. Another experience. Yes. Yeah. Shake Havan Garabedian is the founder of Artbridge Bookstore Cafe, which was established in 2001, but whose chapter in Yerevan's history has come to an end. The space has served as a platform for local artists and writers to promote their works, but this time it hosted CivilNet for a candid conversation about how Artbridge defied the norms of its time and contributed to the development of a city's culture and art and made memories for over two decades. Artbridge is known for being a cultural hub. What inspired you to create a place that not, not only serves food and drinks where people can enjoy their food and drink, but also where they can get immerse themselves in arts and in literature and yeah. To be honest with you, um, um, I came to Armenia in 1999 and um, I worked part-time. I did a uh, little bit of cafe hopping those days. Um, those days you couldn't see uh, ladies or women or young ladies, um, which I wasn't at the time, um, sitting in a cafe and having a coffee. So uh, the idea of a bookstore cafe came with a space because the space uh, required to have uh, two businesses. Uh, the main wall being a divider. So it, it was very natural to become a bookstore cafe. And at the time, uh, you couldn't have coffee at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, you could buy flowers Maybe. anytime. Yes, not 8.30 in the morning, you couldn't have coffee. So basically, the formula of Artbridge came based on my needs. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I needed uh, books. Uh, I needed my coffee, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and exhibitions uh, was very interesting to me. And at the time, I didn't know many people. Uh, artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, those days uh, was pretty interesting. First three months, I had to beg almost to um, exhibit uh, artwork on the walls. Interesting. How did you find the, these people, the artists? Because a lot of them, they're not very well known. They were kind of obscure. And true, yeah. true. Um, I was lucky to know few people, hmm. uh, so through that we started. Um, and when the paintings uh, got sold, automatically people came, the started. artists came, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a lot of, um, reservation two years in advance uh, and everything for, for, for in pieces, the beginning. Really? Yeah. And wow. um, the beauty of this um, process, I, I call it a process. Mm -hmm. The process was I have uh, witnessed how the publishing started growing, mm -hmm. um, how the book uh, translations, um, the quality of paper, the quality of wording, the qual I mean, it's, I mean, that experience, it's amazing to see it from the beginning. Exactly. I was going to say, like, over the years, I'm sure that industry has really shifted and changed and... Uh, very much so. And you've, you've established so. a very... Mm, 
good relationship with the publishing uh, yes. uh, publishers in Armenia, etc. Yes, and we imported books. Mm -hmm. um, we had a formula um, that we wanted. I wanted to be a, a place that we uh, offer um, books about Armenia, mm. Armenian history, genocide issues, um, and um, art. Mm -hmm. That was our main goal, basically. So for the publishing industry, yes. again, 20-something years, what has changed? And maybe you can tell us what still needs to change. As far as publishing is concerned, uh, I would say, um, actually, I was at the event uh, the other day, and we were talking about it. Um, one thing I'm, I have to say this, um, that I'm a little bit, um, not sorry, but we were one of the independent bookstores. Mm. We never uh, applied for grants. We never applied anything for money from the government. We don't publish. I strictly decided that I don't want to publish. I just want to uh, sell the books. Um, from that experience, I've, um, it's amazing that we have a lot of good books for children up to 11 years old. 11 to 16, we don't have anything. Mm. So young adult, yeah. Young, young adult, yeah. we don't. It's like you teach the um, children to get into the habit of reading, and then and all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. we don't have anything. Uh -huh. but. In any case, so that's we've, been, we've been we've been talking about that, and the, now the new trends of um, audiobooks, ah, yeah. okay. um, Kindle, right, um, electronic books, not Kindle mm -hmm. necessarily, mm -hmm. yeah, but electronic books. Um, I think one of the publishers is st started working on audiobooks now. Hopefully, that will be very successful. Um, what I see the big gap is the young adult um, section. Um, hopefully somebody will catch that gap and fill that gap um, soon, because that's a very good market. Um, and then earlier you were talking about how our bridge was one of the few places, especially when it first opened, I think it was the only place that actually was open at 8.30 a.m. So Correct. people could come and have coffee at early in the morning. And we used to have a um, daily newspaper. Right. The concept is um, before you go to work, you come, you have a cup of coffee, um, get in touch with daily news of what's happening or what happened yesterday type of thing. Uh, so um, that that pretty much worked very well. Everybody was thinking like nobody's going to have coffee. Well, that's what I was going to 8 say. Yeah, especially for Armenia, it feels like. What made you think that it would work? Um, I don't know. Uh, not that I'm thinking. Uh, see, I was foresee I guess I was foreseeing the today. Mm -hmm. Now everybody goes to work early. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, those days, I mean. The streets weren't that full. The mushroom cars weren't full because there, there weren't that many jobs. Um, um, but now, 7.30 in the morning, it's everybody's going to already. work. Yeah. And the best part of it is today you can have a cup of coffee mm -hmm. um, and breakfast at 8 o'clock mm -hmm. in, in Yerevan. In basically. Yerevan, yeah. Um, and I guess when... It comes to the cafe portion of things as well. Your approach to food has also been different because there's a mixture between continental style, Armenian style, comfort food. Um, and a lot of people probably said that that combination will never work, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it did. And uh, how did you do it? <laughs> the funny part of this whole thing is um, I'm not a businesswoman. I haven't studied business. Um, as I said, it's based on my need. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, our recipes are mine. Um, I, I'm a, I created it, and I have to say my staff makes it much better than I do today. <laughs> um, 
it was based on that, I would say. We used to, when I say everything was based on my need, I, I found out that um, if I want to go to a cultural event, um, the, those days there were, there were only places that you could buy tickets and get the advertisement it was uh, around opera. Opera, the box offices. And my Armenian was, wasn't as good as today, so I had a hard time reading. So we started selling tickets and uh, having a program printed. So you could just pass by on Abovian Street, come and get your um, cultural events. Then decide if you want to buy a ticket. The people will call. We didn't deliver. Uh, they could come and pick it up from the store. Those are the things um, because I needed that. So I thought, well, 10% of people might need, need, might be the same. Mm. True. Um, and I would say that starting a business without a business background, I mean, even with the business background, it's quite difficult. How did you overcome those challenges that uh, over the years of like creating your own business and navigating those issues? Um, honestly, I learned uh, step by step. Step by step. Um, and if there was an issue, I tried to find a solution for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say one, I'm one of those people that knows her weaknesses very well. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, accounting, tax laws, um, I have very good people um, to help me. So I, I will ask a question and they will tell me this is the uh, rules and regulations type of thing. Um, actually, we have a very funny story on that. At one point, um, the social ministry decided that uh, most of the companies, they're not registering their people. So everybody should have a badge. OK. Uh, and um, there should be a picture on a badge. Fine. So I decided that, OK, I don't want my staff picture when you see them. So I put the picture on the back of the badge. And, uh, oh, the law said, that law said there should be a stamp um, on the picture, on a badge. Okay, we put it on the back. <laughs> and they came uh, for inspection. Obviously, we, from the first day, we registered everyone, um, and we had a schedule of eight hours shift. Um, so they came, they said, there's no picture on your bad, your staff badges, on the badges. I said, there is. See, you turn around and there's a picture. And they said, that's not the correct place. I said, well, let's read not, the yeah. uh, rules and regulation. And there wasn't any place that it said where it should it had, be. That indicated that, right. Ten days later, they changed the whole <laughs> <laughs> I love those days, honestly, mm. because um, we were participating in the growth and in the, the um, yeah, because you cared. Um, everybody on those, those days, everybody who was working felt very responsible mm. for every rules and regulation that was happening. So it was interesting, very sure. interesting. And how is the cultural landscape changed. Um, why do you feel that now is the time? Um, I think every person, every place uh, has a role to play. I think um, we have finished our role. Um, what's going to happen next? I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's, it just feels right. Mm. Honestly, it just feels mm. right. It's, uh, when I was opening, it felt right. Uh, now it's, it feels right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, obviously, um, 
things brings you to that right moment. Um, I have a lot of respect for that. Yeah. To to say, okay, let's let's finish this. It feels like your gut is, instincts haven't led yes. you wrong no. so far. So. No, <laughs> honestly, yeah. you're you're right. I I <laughs> ran my business with my gut instinct. Um, we have done a lot. Uh, I have learned a lot. Uh, one of the programs that I loved the most was the concept of doing a exhibition and sales of books mm -hmm. in the villages. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to border villages um, and it was a fantastic experience. Um, we would print posters, we we'll send it ahead of time. And there wasn't a, the decision was like one morning I would come to work and say, we're going to Mehri or we're going mm -hmm. to wear Akhar uh, Kalak or whatever. Um, that was the, I will never forget that um, experience. And we always set it for two hours. Um, with that, we always to, um, took with us as some kind of a cultural mm. things. It could have been paintings, it could have um, musical type of things. So the concept was if it's only book, uh, maybe you will, if you can't afford it, you can't really go, you're not going to go to that exhibition and sales. Mm. But on a way to the um, um, concert, the kids would touch the books, open the books and everything. That was the, one of the best programs that we have done. To engage with people that yes. way. Yes, and, uh, and, the, and the children. And most of the time, it was, I was telling you the other day, in every village that we have done, there were like a couple of kids will not leave that table. <laughs> uh, they will touch every book. They will start reading a couple of sentences. It was a very great experience, and it was a great program. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah, I can imagine how to see the spark in their eyes too. Oh, definitely. And we didn't go to the um, center of states. We went to the villages, villages. actually. Yeah. So, so having said that, um, my understanding is that this isn't the end of Artbridge altogether. There's still our bridge, uh, the bookstore in AUA, there are still other things that you're doing. Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, that? Yes, um, we are not dissolving, basically. Um, the way um, I look at it is, this is the end of one project. Uh, that doesn't mean our other projects has ended. And honestly, I'm looking forward to uh, what's going to come next. Uh, we will be doing um, everything that we have been doing without this space. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, um, because most of the time you're not defined by the space. Sometimes you are. Let's see if we can keep it up. And um, on the 23rd, there's going to be a, kind of like a closing farewell, thank you type party. Um, why did you decide to do it that way? And Honestly, um, Artbridge would not have been Artbridge if it wasn't for the suppliers, for the artists, for the writers and customers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I couldn't just close the door. Um, I'm very grateful. Um, because I have learned, I met wonderful people mm -hmm. from different um, scope of society, basically. And um, this is my way of saying thank you. Um, thank you for being with us for past 20, 20 whatever <laughs> um, years. Um, thank you for teaching me a lot. Thank you for... Um, creating the atmosphere that Art Bridget is today. So this is just a very, as I said, I'm grateful and I, I just wanted to tell everyone.
Well, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say thank you for the contributions that you made by creating this space for so many people and for being an active part of both the arts, the cultural aspects of things in Armenia, and also the food and beverage industry. <laughs> I mean, why not? Thank um, you. And thank you for watching CivilNet. Thank you.